Hello, Fox friends. Uh, in the last few years, a few months, I've been receiving videos, suggestions from people, especially in Canada, saying they are living in Canada. I'm talking of migrants who moved to Canada a few years ago with the hope of a better life, but are going back to their own countries. But there are also people from Canada, from USA, from UK, from um, Australia, probably going overseas in countries like Latin America or Southeast Asia for many reasons, but mainly because they're not happy with where they are at the moment. But I'm going to focus on the migrants in particular because when we come here, we come because the grass is greener on the other side. And I've made the videos of the pros and the cons, in which case the pros were dominant, the positive dog were really dominant, so I was for giving it a try. The main reason they are citing in Canada is mainly the cost of living. Some are, are the, the weather, but the weather has been always a problem with you in Canada. If you come from a tropical place, it's always cold. So it, that I hope didn't come as a surprise to anyone. But the cost of living is a different story because when you are outside of Canada, outside of the United States, outside of Australia, outside of everything, you do believe really, you have the impression that this place is a paradise, that everything is sorted, no one is on the street, nobody goes hungry and everything is okay. If you need a doctor, you go straight away. But the way health care is one other thing I've mentioned, I've, them, I've heard them mention as the one reason they don't like Canada anymore. Now, this is spreading across the, the Western world, really. The cost of living is, is really, really escalating to the point where at times I think, I wonder how people are living that are on a minimum wage. And it's not just Canadian or Australians, and what I'm saying, it's not just migrants, it's anyone really who live on a small salary. It is really hard to make ends meet these days. Even with those with the modest income, they just barely make it. Even those on higher income, it is really hard these days to buy a house in many cities that are not Toronto, Ontario, Vancouver, in Canada, uh, San Francisco, Los Angeles, probably in most major cities, especially those big liberal cities. But I would think Cali um, Florida is, is, is expensive. London, uh, all cities of Australia now are really high. Uh, Perth and uh, Adelaide are still okay-ish, but even them have gone really uh, high in the last few, few uh, couple of years. And I'm talking, of course, of housing in particular because that's one big expense for an individual and for families. That's one kind of necessity. If you are a father or a mother and you've got children, you really want them to be in a house of your own and not to be able, just to be able to have a house and not to have to be moving around due to tenancy uh, changing or owners wanting to sell and all of that. So the cost of housing is skyrocketed and it is putting a lot of people off. And as I said, I saw a video of Canada, but I'm pretty sure there are people in the, uh, other countries that are also hurting and they're probably not making, making, making videos. And here in New Zealand, or as, as I can tell, the majority of my friends uh, have moved to Australia, basically, uh, since uh, I came here. People, we, we wait until they get their citizenship. There is an arrangement between Australia and New Zealand where if you go to New, to Australia with a New Zealand citizen, you, 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 you have got a, a residence. Not sure if it's a permanent residence, but it's a sort of residence that gives you rights to health care, but also to look for work without needing any work permit or work visa. So a lot of my friends went there and they both bought houses when I was really struggling to save for a house. They were building new homes uh, for most part. So. I was jealous, in a sense, envious, I should say, but uh, my situation was, and it's still in a such a way that it's not easy for me to park and go, not emotionally easy. It was a, a, a professional easy at the time, I was working uh, remote, but uh, that also is going to end, but even then it wasn't too easy for me to park up and go, so I didn't go. But the majority of my friends went over there and they just bought decent houses over here, over there. In, um, obviously they probably didn't go 
to Sydney. Sydney was more expensive than uh, Auckland. But in Auckland, even with a million, you don't have a nice family house. So under a million, you're talking of a townhouse. You really don't buy a freestanding house with a backyard. Unless you're buying something that is about to fall apart and that you have to spend another half a million to fix because it is also expensive to get repairs done these days. So that's really uh, one thing I heard people complain about, but I see some other thing and um, it's lawlessness. Uh, let me call that way instead of crime, although it goes, it's crime as a such. And I'm not sure about the Canada, but uh, in New Zealand, uh, what I can see is uh, there is a bit of an uh, increase in criminal activities over the last few years. I'm not sure if it has ties with the cost of living because when people are desperate, they do desperate things. But um, a city like Auckland used to be a kind of heaven. You don't hear anything bad happening. But now, probably every week, there is a murder, there's a homicide, there's a shooting, which was unheard of when we came here. You could just walk all over the place and don't be scared of anything. And uh, I mentioned this incident that happened to me. It wasn't big. I don't. I don't think it was anything. I think maybe it was just young people do, who were maybe drunk or something. But it kind of. Uh, it's the first incident I've heard in my entire life, probably since I left the country, my my home country. And uh, I didn't understand what they were saying. And the act of uh, speed, uh, um, spreading some water on me wasn't. I, it, it wasn't that trivial. I mean, it would be trivial if they just shout uh, or say something. But if they do something, that to me is a, it's a sign of an increase in intolerance, in violence, in crime, in lawlessness. And uh, without being very nosy, I can see like around the streets, there are some sort of suspicious activities where you see a lot of cars, people sitting in the cars and talking. And, and it looks dodgy when I look at those streets. Um, so we have a gang culture here where gangs are kind of uh, legal to start with. And they are recruiting, uh, at one year I heard that they actually their recruitment numbers are higher than the police. So uh, it's, it's quite a phenomenon I don't comprehend. But at the same time, they are the ones that do most of the shooting and I do suspect most of the robberies. And you can see a lot of uh, news in the news people, young people generally 14 to 17 years old, breaking into shops and stealing cigarettes and the beers and the stuff. So, lawlessness, as I said, I wouldn't put it necessarily the cost of living. I think there is a bit of a. Um, I, um, I love liberal politics, but there is a bit of a an assumption in liberal politics that humans are generally good but in reality i think we've got evil people out there and uh, what i mean is uh, we tend a liberal government tends to be very soft on crime and the criminals take advantage of that let me put it that way so if they say that for example you cannot jail anyone under the age of 17 so kids under the age of 17 will do anything they want because what are going to do about it? And the worst, young people, big brothers, can possibly use the young ones, like they recruit them in their gangs or their clubs or whatever, give them a car and send them to steal somewhere to bring the proceeds back, you know? Because they know if they catch the young ones, they're just going to send them to a rehab for a week, give them a few civic education, and they home they go. Uh, it's worse in some liberal states in the United States where actually you find the repeat offenders who are just walking around the street and they're committing more crime or in the process. But also a lot of lawlessness where just young people can wake up in the morning and go to a shop and steal and destroy everything they want and nothing does happen to them. So that's something to worry about as we progress. Obviously, society generally does progress. And it doesn't stay static and nobody wants it to be static. I think it's good to evolve because there are a lot of horrible things in the past. We, don't, we didn't want to stay. 
but at the same time we can go in the opposite direction too fast uh, as they say the, the pendulum could swing a bit too far and it could become a bit of a, a dangerous place to live so I'm not saying I'm living in New Zealand personally. I think I like it here for a number of other reasons. I just have to be a little more cautious. And on the financial front, I just have to find another job, a second job or a side gig or uh, just be careful with my spending and uh, be prepared and uh, reduce consumption. That's another thing in the West. I think we consume way too much. There's always a uh, ways to cut consumption and uh, fit into the budget. Okay, that's all I wanted to say. Uh, not to discourage anybody who want to migrate, but to just do so. Some research should be some countries are better than others. Even within the countries, some cities are better than others. Uh, I could give an example. In Australia, for example, we have got uh, six states or something like that. So Canberra, Sydney being probably the most biggest, not the biggest, but they have got uh, the most political, I think, uh, sort of um, establishment. Then Melbourne is probably bigger than Canberra, but um, that's the big city. Those ones are probably more expensive uh, than the rest of the country. Then I haven't heard much about Hobart and um, or Tasmania and the Northern Territory. But um, the Western, West Australia or Perth and the South Australia or Adelaide are still affordable at this stage. Whether there is enough uh, jobs for people that I don't know. But what I'm saying is within one country there is a, a lot of discrepancy on to the cost of living and the same goes with crime and uh, peace I should say. So that's all I can say and uh, please guys like my video and follow me on here. Thank you. Bye.